Okay, so those two little patches are, let's say, crudely patched up. That's not a proper leveling job, but it is considerably more level. After a few watering sessions, I'll come back again when the surface is dry and just smoothen it out again, remove those stones, and I'll try and just uh, feel with the fingers around in the in the uh, in the soil there to pick up any stones that are this sort of five to ten centimeter depth. Anything deeper than that. And this is big stone, it's not really an issue because it's not going to jump up at you uh, or into your mow over time. Um, but anything that's close to the surface will cause you trouble, so clear that up. And yeah, Kukuyu Guru Lawn Leveling Rake, also one of the products on the site if you want it, go and grab it there. And it makes really light work of, uh, ah, it's kind of not really a difficult job. I suppose with the big area it's a, it's a difficult job, but that thing it's simple if you if you actually hold it the way you're supposed to hold it and that's right at the back and only push rather than pull it's easy when you move across you can clearly see where you're working and with those five bars one after each other you break up a lot of the clods just in that action and the stones tend to bounce back at you you can see them nice and easy and then you uh, just pick them up and chuck them away done Yeah, goeiemorgen mensen. You thought that I forgot the introduction. Not today. So what you would have seen there is a little bit of work that I did yesterday was mowing and a bit of lawn leveling or spot leveling, just put it that way. And today we're going to fertilize. But before I talk about what fertilizers we're going to be putting down, I just want to show you what the grass looks like up close at this point in time. To give you an idea, this is what the lawn looks like after a rotary mow. You can see that the tips are not perfect like what you would get with a cylinder but look at the grass it is spot 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 on as far as plant health goes I'm very 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 happy with that and now we are just gonna make it better so why is the grass looking so healthy well it's not by never mind that creepy crawly again it's not by mistake it's by design I've started looking after the soil not even fully I've just started with it so it's a little bit of maintenance no neglect no procrastination I'm doing something in little bits we've worked on the soil we've done a repair we've done a little bit of a maintenance feed and that was now about three weeks ago so today it's time again for a maintenance feed but what's more important is that the the products that we're putting down now are promoting cell development and regeneration so that's cytokinins, auxins, amino acids, proteins, so not just NPK value. So the NPK value, that's for general growth, it's going to build you a plant, it's the first and, and it's the type of thing that you're always going to need. You have to be putting down nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium at varying rates of course all the time. But when the plant's under severe stress, like now during autumn and in spring and in winter and sometimes in the dead heat of summer, these cell regeneration uh, properties are going to be required even more. In a nutshell, as the plant is taking a beating, we are fighting it by building the plant's uh, resistance and tolerance to the elements and the effects of these stressful situations. We're building that tolerance. As it's taking strain from the elements and whatever else is being, being thrown at it, we are helping it fight. And in this case, we are doing better than what the elements are throwing at us. Bar nothing. I mean, it's it's considerably better. I'm really impressed with that. Now the the types of products and the way the products are used and in the, the order that they're used is important. So today we're adding a bit of iron and the reason for that is iron is a turf hardening product. So we're still putting down natural kelp plus we're still putting down Vuma vegetative with a bit of super wet because we're going to keep adding a little bit of super wet every single time we put down a foliar feed so that we don't have to, or at least what we're trying to prevent is having to do more drenches. We want the uh, this sort of light top up all the time. And now by adding iron to the equation, we are increasing not only a bit of green, but the turf hardening properties. It gives the plant the ability to not only withstand, like for example, the orcs and cytokinins, amino acids, all that kind of stuff is going to build a faster redeveloping plant so it can fight disease, fight pest, uh, issues, fight um, elemental issues. The iron is now going to provide a strong, a physically strong plant. So it's, it's otherwise known as a turf hardener. So today we're going to just add a little bit of that to the equation and then later on we'll add a little bit more. Let's have a look at those products quick. 
Okay, so there's the trio that I'm pretty much always going to be going to for general maintenance moving forward and we just change the volumes depending on time of the year. So super wet, that is a penetrative wetting agent for those who don't know, form of vegetative, 513 liquid fertilizer including micros and auxin, cytokinins and amino acids. So on its own, it's a pretty good product. Natural Kelp Plus is not just a kelp product, it's kelp product plus high quality proteins. And then we've got Iron Pro Nutec. And as you can see there, it's an iron, sulfur, amino acid, and nitrogen. Well, there's a little bit of nitrogen there from the amino acids uh, in this equation then as well. So this is gonna help us with, as I mentioned earlier, greening up the plant, yes, but in this circumstance, I'm using it for its turf hardening properties. So touching on these turf hardening properties that iron provides a little bit further is it is literally what golf courses use those that can afford it i guess to strengthen up the turf up here in the half holes in particular before winter this is now uh, you know what i've been trying to sort of preach in the past is read your lawn know your region know your climate and what your uh, what you can experience at these different times of the year and that's only a learning process you, you, you're going to get it over time but be aware of these things so you can learn them so golf courses know as we get deeper into winter, uh, well, deeper into autumn or later into autumn and then into winter, the grass is thinning out. You need to or should be reducing nitrogen to just a little extent because that provides a lush leaf. And the trade-off then is that you're obviously going to lose growth, of course, but we don't need to induce huge growth um, because you might be causing other damage. So we're going to put iron in to strengthen and still keep the plant green in these stressful times. So even though it might be thinning out and losing a bit of sore density, it's quite strong. And it now wasn't done with the nitrogen as the green and go foundation that's now iron as the uh, hold back and stay strong foundation but still green so this is why iron is so important in moderation now I almost forgot to mention up and coming vids we're going to do some cow mag so this we're going to get down in the next video or two okay so that's enough chit chat let's get that tank mix sorted out and get spraying and before we do that if you found any of this useful, please hit a like. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. Spray time. done. I normally do three tankfuls in this backyard. I decided to just uh, walk it out a bit faster. So I set the spray up a little bit finer so that hopefully I don't miss anything because with iron you can see lines. And uh, I just walked a little bit faster, paced it out and I managed to get two tanks. So I hope it's enough. Uh, pace wise is about the same so I think I should be fine. Okay so there it is post foot. Post a slightly short mow. And I'll try to put a pick in at the end of the video if I get another day before loading the video. Otherwise, maybe a little bit uh, after I've watered it or something like that just to let some of this take effect. So this is now foliar application. It's got to stay on the grass for a couple of hours before you water it in. Uh, depending on product, you sometimes have to put down the foliar application, leave it only in for a few minutes, and then water it in. Okay, so that's it. In the next day or two, we'll uh, do another follow-up and uh, I'll definitely be putting extra pictures up on Instagram and that kind of thing so yeah I'll keep tabs on that thanks for watching cheers okay next morning and I can safely say that we are a lot greener so definitely my mowing is now the the thing that I need to work on and I think that can only be sold with the cylinder mower so that can happen to any time too soon, but and then obviously some lawn leveling, smoothing out some of the you know the bigger bumps that cause these uh, rotary issues. That could help me a little bit as well, and I think there's enough time for me to do it. 
But yeah, if you guys want to see me mow again with that small little 12 inch 30 centimeter manual cylinder mower, the push type cylinder mower, stick it in the comments and I'll do it. Cheers.